So I wanted to do a video today and talk about how I handle things being an IT support company that runs Linux and why we run Linux. So one, a lot of Linux stuff is has to do for me with security and it's an environment I'm comfortable with and a lot of my staff runs this as well because it's something they're comfortable with. But of course, we support Windows machines. We're not a uh, Linux company supporting other Linux. We do some of that more. I do some of that, uh, but it's not the mainstay because we're doing small business support, which means QuickBooks and all the general programs you see in small businesses and all that runs for the most part on top of Windows machines and servers. So how do you administer Windows machines and servers when you're running Linux on your desktop as the base OS? Well, I do that with a lot of virtualization and I'm showing you kind of the workflow here. This is uh, KDE Neon that I'm running for this. I got a whole review on uh, my actual OS and some of the eye candy comes with it. I do like that feature that I can kind of expand all the screens. And I'm showing you, I run this all with triple monitors. And what that means is there's different things at every section of my monitor and it's how I control my workflow. So I'm gonna start with uh, how I lay out my screens first. I guess that's kind of important. So on my left screen is usually all the browser tabs that I have open for our critical things like uh, Messenger, which yes, we use Facebook Messenger. We have our Slack channel over here. Um, I use Gmail because I'm using the whole G Suite. So majority of my stuff runs in a browser for all of that. This is our point of sale system you're actually looking at now. Then we have our uh, wiki and our screen connect that we're uh, running so I can connect remotely to computers. And this all runs fine in Linux, including if I want to take control of a system. Easy enough for me to go in here, uh, grab control and open up screen connect. Now, the nice thing is uh, being all web-based and then having a Java launcher, means I can just go ahead and do this. I'm gonna switch back to the three screens so you can see what I'm doing. And then that gives me control of a computer. And I'll usually pull that one to the middle right now. And you may have noticed it looks like I'm running Windows in the middle. I am. I run Windows all inside of virtual machines. So this is just a virtual machine running Windows, but I can also drag things right back over on top of it or switch between it. So I can I don't have to have that full screen. So I can just go back and pull over here. And if I'm working on stuff, I pull that all back over to the middle. Now, when I'm the middle screen is usually whatever project I'm working on. Like I said, this one's running Windows full screen. Uh, so I can do all the Windows things that I need to do. And then over here on my right screen, this is gonna look funny. Yeah, because I'm gonna I'm using OBS to record. But this is generally where all my communication stuff ends up. So uh, my Google Hangouts, I have IRC open, some always BSing with some friends and things like that. I hang out usually in the Wayne State Lug channel because uh, I have a few friends at Wayne State and we call it the lunch channel more than anything else. Occasionally we go to lunch together. So uh, there's random Linux messages in there and things like that because it's a Linux users group that really only lives in here. We don't really get together and physically meet other than for lunch. So I have all my communication things going on over here and I'll drag other communication things over here that I'm waiting for. Now, as far as uh, the applications go, this is also where I keep my uh, virtual box stuff. So let's go to that. And then I have all my virtual machines. Now, the thing I'm doing with my virtual machines because I'm running Windows and uh, they're all virtualized is I end up with a bunch of special projects for clients all the time. Now, the nice thing about running them virtually and it's all sitting on an SSD is I'll show you in real time here, I won't pause or do anything is I'll show you how quickly we can spin up, start down. Let me switch back to all the screens. It actually shuts down slower than it starts up. But for example, uh, right here is the machine I refer to as Windows 10 support system because it has all the tools I need for special support for clients when I log into things. So I double clicked it and you're watching in real time how fast it boots up. I know it's booted up before, even when it's not cached, it uh, boots up within this few seconds like this. The only thing to aggravate an occasion if there's an update, but it's pretty quick. Oh, I love when Windows does this. There we go. It pauses randomly on any computer. If you aren't familiar with that Windows 10 thing, it does that once in a while. I don't have an answer, but then I'm in. Now, 
more apt to the workflow, uh, yesterday was a good example of a project I had to do for a client that required me to load special software to get connected to their network and then load another tool in order to get things going. And the way I handle that is uh, I've got a whole thing I do on VirtualBox, but I clone my VirtualBox. So I'm over here and let me actually jump right to the screen and show you. So over here in VirtualBox, I just jump over here, right click, clone. Next, and maybe I'll, I'll usually call it the client name, uh, and I do what they call a linked clone. So right here's my Windows 10 support clone. So what this is for is those special occasions. So when I had the special software, I hurry up, I, I do this clone, and you can see even cloning it took only a matter of seconds. Back to all the screens. And now I have a complete clone of that one. Then I go, I load whatever crap software they want to load, which was some VPN connection software and then a bunch of other tools to, to manage a project uh, that I finished. And this is how I handle that. Now, I like this better because back in the days of just running Windows, you're like, oh man, I got to load a tool, but it's not a tool I'm going to use very often. I hate cluttering up Windows with things because uh, it can cause so many issues. So when I'm done with the virtual machine, I just go back over here and shut it down. Then I can right click on the virtual machine, remove, and delete all files, done. So project's over, deleted files. I still have my clean Windows 10 system with nothing added on to it. And uh, the only thing it does is leave a snapshot in case I want to go through there and I can just go ahead and delete the snapshot it created because I didn't make any changes and it merges all the change dates back in and weren't really in this one. Uh, so that kind of helps with my workflow of that. Now actual Linux tools that I'm using um, on the desktop are going to be these apps here, uh, like Genie. I'm bring that one over here and th throw it over in the middle screen. Uh, Genie is a really great tool for looking at all kinds of code, whether it's HTML, PHP, or when I'm uh, putting together like a script to get something done, to parse something. Genie's really helpful for that. It's kind of a tabbed, not really... Uh, a compiler, but it's kind of, it is an IDE, but it's not like a full one, but it does have some compiling options and things like that. So you can tie it in other things. Uh, that's a really great app for that. For all my recording stuff, I'm using uh, OBS uh, that I have open over here. So I'm recording on right now with my uh, Yeti mic, but it's, it's really not a ton of apps that I have to run because I just run everything inside of the virtual machine. Now, one thing that is real important is my screen tool. I do this a lot, which is a cool a tool called Shutter. And I do that because I, people ask me a lot of questions, I need to work instruction, how do I get into something? And I'll just go grab, and it lets me grab a screenshot of something real quick. Grabs that screenshot, then I can right away jump into the editor and do things like put an arrow and then throw some text. Click here and uh, move it over, save. And now I can then take this. Uh, there's options actually to upload it right to Imager or things like that, or you can just do copy and I'll throw it in Facebook Messenger or wherever I'm replying uh, or my email and that's how I tell people where to click. This is a great little tool and I, it's that quick for me to send things. Because people ask like, man, you do that fast. I'm like, yeah, it's really, really handy. Now, a uh, nice thing is we are using Screen Connect for our remote support and it has a draw on screen option. So sometimes uh, when we'll talk to clients, we'll jump into Screen Connect, grab control of their computer and we can draw on the screen and show them where they have to click on something. Because uh, a lot of little support things are, they just didn't realize you, could, you needed to do this or do this. So we can just you know share some understanding of how something works. Now, that's my, most of like your, my daily use of uh, running Linux. All my other special, as I call them, support applications, anything that's not web-based is going to run inside of that uh, Windows 10 box I have that I call Windows 10 support system. But there's really not much of a need to go in there because Screen Connect runs natively in Linux uh, for our remote sessions to support people. I loathe Outlook, so I never use Outlook. The only time I ever use Outlook is to do some testing for a client and load Outlook on something for them, uh, you know, to make sure something works or uh, whatever. So my chat application, if I didn't say it was HexChat, uh, that's another free one you can do for all my IRC communications. And 
It's not really much else other than being in the terminal, uh, pinging who is and looking things up all the time. I had to do a bunch of NS lookups yesterday because a client was having a problem. Uh, we're a part of an IT group that was working on it, and the head end of the IT group is not as competent as I'd like them to be. So they were sending me things that made no sense, and I had to show them my NS lookups, and they're like, oh, we didn't realize it looked like that outside the building. So sometimes you're, well, I'm using DIG. They're using NS lookup on Windows. But so there's some command line tools I use who is in DIG to look things up occasionally. So I do have the terminal open a lot. But there's not a lot of other apps that I have running all the time on there. It's like we can live in a browser now more than anything, which really makes the transition to Linux so much easier. If I need to keep notes, I'm using Google Keep for all my note taking. Uh, nothing like passwords or anything goes in there because for security reasons. Uh, all the LastPass handles a lot of my password management. Once again, browser plugin, cross-platform, so I don't have to run Windows for any of that. And... This kind of makes my workflow easy. Now, I might do a separate video. I mean, if it comes down to, because I'm talking about IT support here, when it comes to things like running a uh, video editing suite, I really love Caden Live. I've done a video on it. So I thought about doing a whole video on my workflow for editing videos and just kind of talk about how I do it, how I handle it. But that's all here. I do have GIMP running too, but once again, that's more related to... Uh, video editing. I don't like GIMP a lot as an editor, but for making my YouTube thumbnails, it's actually really, really easy. So like when I made my little Equifax one, I can just copy and paste things. As a matter of fact, that's actually a nice feature in there is uh, this works fine in Linux. Let me pull this up. You can just right click, uh, copy, edit, paste as new layer. Um, and this is, I know this is available in Windows, but it works just fine in Linux too. So I can just paste things as a new layer, drop them in, and that's how I create my thumbnails and everything. So I'm gonna do a separate video on my workflow for video, but I wanted to share kind of what's on my desktop, how we do support. And it's it's really that kind of boring, <laughs> kind of simple. Uh, the other program that I'm not gonna pull up right now is I feel like obscuring everything is uh, KMI Money. And I love that program. I've been using it for years to handle all of our uh, ledger for you know end of month finances and things like that. I got a whole separate video you can find on how I use that program to uh, do all of our accounting because I really don't like QuickBooks uh, and it does support banking inputs. But that's it, there's not a lot else to doing this. I mean, so much of my time when I have to run Windows for Windows support tools, I'm just using VirtualBox uh, for all of that. And, you know, cloning them so I don't clutter things up. And you may notice in my VirtualBox here, that I actually, when I have to do some other testing uh, with things for security reasons, uh, I have like, if I need to do some pen testing, I have a copy of Parrot Security running right here for testing that I'm playing with right now. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a whole review on Parrot. It's just so extensive. I'm trying to decide if I wanna do a real long review or a bunch of series of short videos on there, like explaining each piece of it. Um, whenever I'm running PFSense, I have a copy here. Uh, PFSense, my testing box when I demo things, PFSense 2.4 release candidate, which once that one goes full, definitely doing a full review of PFSense, uh, testing with some security onion stuff. And that's a nice thing about virtual machines. Now, I do have a Windows XP box uh, sitting here and I had to load it up the other day. Occasionally clients will have some really old piece of software and they need it tested and it's really only supported Windows XP. So I keep a clean uh, Windows XP handy just for spinning up and doing some testing when I have to test something with an XP. Uh, as we have some clients in the manufacturing, they have legacy support applications. Uh, it's been a while. I know you can run some even older OSs in here, but so far I haven't had anyone that needs anything be prior to XP uh, running. It's enough stuff that does work inside of Windows XP, so we're good on that. So that's kind of it for the workflow. Um, and how I'm getting things done. Like I said, I'll do a separate one just talking about my video workflow, but it's also handy because you know I have a fast computer, so being able to run all these machines virtualized is really uh, makes it safe because everything's kind of containered to that. Because if I wanted to do any testing on something like copy over a file and say, I don't know if I trust this, I wanna know what it's doing, you can very quickly uh, create a virtual network with PFSense, uh, turn on some tracing and everything so you can fully log what a virtual machine is doing and then bridge that network in the settings right to that network you create and keep everything kind of locked down tight and so you can do some analysis. Once again, way easier to do it in a virtual environment so I don't have to physically set anything up and having a fast enough computer to do that makes my life a whole lot easier. Uh, 
Caden, KDE Neon is fairly stable. I've been really happy with it. I will admit if you're going to switch to Linux, don't start with this distribution. You probably want to start with something along the lines of just straight Ubuntu, which is really, was for me rock solid. I just love all the eye candy I get with um, the KDE Neon platform, but the crashing if ever, is really minimal. It's a really solid operating system, uh, so I don't really have any issues with it. But like I said, I do another video on my just dedicated to how my video production workflow does on uh, Linux and go from there. But this is how I run my IT support and everything for me and my staff. We just run Windows virtually because we can't get away from it completely, but I can at least containerize it and keep it very clean and uh, you know minimize the amount of uh, update downtime that we may have because we don't really need to use Windows as our daily driver. Uh, you know, unless you're a gamer, then it's a whole different thing. So if you like the content here, like and subscribe. Hopefully that answers the questions. If you have more questions, uh, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. Thank you.